Okay. Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to another webinar uh, by Lachi Soft. My name is Nick Solfikar. I'm the Director of Client Services here. Uh, with me is my colleague, Ron Hussain, who's our Senior Technology Evangelist. Uh, Ron has been with us for over 10 years, and he has great depth of experience, uh, both working with the clients as well as uh, with the technology uh, that we produce. Um, we're very excited today to bring you a brand new topic. Uh, it's about how to optimize your ASP.NET Core um, uh, using data dash. Um, as you all know, ASP.NET uh, Core is, um, is produced by Microsoft. It's an open source um, cross-platform uh, used for building cloud-based applications, uh, modern internet connected. Uh, it has some um, performance bottlenecks and um, Ron is going to share with us how we can use a distributed caching solution like NCache to um, take care of those issues. Um, so with that, I'll uh, switch it over to Ron so he can get started. Um, during the presentation, if you have any questions, uh, just type in the chat box and I'll be able to uh, ask Ron those questions. So uh, Ron, kind of get started. Uh, I'll just uh, put myself on mute. Thank you, Nick. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Ron. Um, I'll be your presenter for today's webinar. And as Nick uh, mentioned, the topic that we've chosen today is scaling ASP.NET core applications with, with, with the help of a distributed caching system. At Alagisoft, we have our main .NET-based distributed caching system. It's called NCache. Uh, I'll be using NCache as an example product, but it will be a general uh, topic. Uh, we'll talk about ASP.NET core performance and scalability bottlenecks and then I'll uh, explain how you could actually start using a distributed caching system such as NCache uh, with the help of their iDistributed cache interface and, and with the help of direct API calls uh, and, and we'll take care of those uh, performance and scalability bottlenecks. I have some code samples that I have lined up for this particular webinar and I'll be sharing uh, detailed examples uh, with the help of these sample applications. So let's get started with this. Uh, I hope everybody can see my screen and uh, hear me fine. So, and I actually, as a matter of fact, I've already got a confirmation on this. So let's quickly get started. First of all, uh, we'll talk about ASP.NET Core. It's, it's becoming popular day by day. A lot of uh, production deployments are, are happening uh, with, specifically with ASP.NET uh, 2.0, .NET Core 2.0, and then ASP.NET uh, 2.0. Uh, a lot of uh, performance and, and a lot of good features have been made part of uh, .NET Core platform. So if you have a .NET Core application or if it's an ASP.NET Core application running on .NET platform or .NET Core platform, uh, nice thing about ASP.NET Core is that you can uh, run it on, it's open source, you can run it on cross-platform, it could run on Windows environments, it could also run on uh, Linux Unix uh, platforms. So it's pretty flexible uh, and, you know, it, it, it has a lot of benefits if you actually start developing with ASP.NET Core. Today we'll cover uh, some of the performance and scalability issues with ASP.NET Core applications and we'll typically, you know, we'll, we'll specifically talk about those and, and we'll talk about typical uh, distributed caching features that you can plug in and, and start using uh, a distributed cache and help address those problems. So I'll get started uh, with the with our first slide, uh, it covers scalability. Now, scalability is uh, an ability within an application. Uh, you should have an application architecture designed in such a way that it simply uh, improves your transactional load handling capacity. For example, if you have a huge amount of users who are logged onto your application, uh, the ability to in actually increase those users and their associated requests without compromising on the performance that ability is called scalability. So essentially, I would also uh, categorize it as uh, performance under high performance under extreme loads. Uh, typically, applications perform very well if you have less number of users log on to the application. For example, you have five users. Uh, I, uh, I would naturally think that you would not have any performance issues. Uh, and similarly, if, if, if you have a huge amount of users, those users increase from five users to say 5,000 or 500,000, and then they have their associated requests, uh, chances are that, that you end up uh, maxing out the resources of the infrastructure that you have. Uh, typically, it's database. Uh, and you see performance degradation. Your requests uh, actually start to queue up, and then you see uh, you know, high latency and, and low throughput as a response of that. So scalability is 
an ability where you can have low latency and you can maintain it and you're able to maintain it under high throughput you can increase as many requests load as many users as many requests uh, associated with those users as possible and at the same time without compromising on the performance this is a linear uh, scalability graph uh, typically within ASP.NET platform you can add more and more web servers uh, or it could be a general idea where you can increase the number of resources your application is architectured in such a way that you have every component independently working and then it's pretty scalable uh, it does not have any contentions and similarly if you have more and more resources added to the application tier or uh, it's a server application where you introduce number of servers uh, idea is that you increase the capacity of how many requests you can handle and if you have that uh, you know ability within the application that would be a linearly scalable application here's a typical example reads per second and writes per second increasing as you have number of servers growing uh, on the horizontal line and then there's a non uh, linear uh, scalability and this is the main challenge that we're, we're trying to address today uh, there are application scenarios and, and we'll talk about one or two going forward for example you have an e-commerce application and there's a, a uh, there's a huge amount of load there there are some sales that uh, people are targeting and at that very moment when your applications are supposed to work well and, and your uh, business needs to grow at that point based on the application performance your application chokes down under high load your application uh, shows performance degradation so it, it's uh, transaction capacity decreases and individual requests actually also got hurt as response of that so your latency increases and your throughput goes down that would be categorized as a non-linear scalable system within an application and why is that let's let's, let's quickly cover that bit as well uh, typically uh, your web applications uh, which are dealing with huge amount of request load those applications need scalability it could be an e-commerce e application it could be an airline booking system it could be a financial server uh, you know service it could be a healthcare industry so regardless of that if a, if it's a web application built in ASP.NET or ASP.NET core platform uh, if it has a lot of user requests a lot of people are joining in and, and using your applications uh, that application uh, that application needs scalability similarly it could be a back-end web service or front-end web service uh, used by other applications uh, for example ASP.NET core web API is a is a prime example of that if it's dealing with a lot of user requests or application requests it needs to have a scalable uh, you know platform or it needs to have that ability where it can scale out similarly uh, big data processing or grid computing uh, these are other concepts where you need scalability and typically it could be any server application which is dealing with huge amount of request load huge amount of users are, are there and, and there's a huge amount of request load we're not talking about, uh, talking about the data uh, scalability we're talking about the transactional load scalability where you can increase the number of requests number of transactions and still be able to have uh, application architecture which, which actually supports those so where exactly is the problem ASP.NET uh, platform you can create a web form uh, you can even have a web server distributed in you know resources distributed with the help of web garden where you can have multiple uh, processes ho hosting the same application and and that uh, gives you an ability to scale out so application tier uh, scales out pretty nicely right you can add as many servers as you need to your you can, your your application form can grow and that would actually help achieve more and more request load uh, without any issues typically it's the database it's the relational database where uh, you know you, all of your application servers are targeting their requests because they have to have data stored somewhere and then you, that data needs to be utilized that becomes a bottleneck you can scale up your database but scaling out a database uh, is, is not an option so and, and even if, if you scale up the database there would be a point and, and we're talking about high transactional load scenarios we're not talking about single server setups or, or less number of users hundreds of users uh, if it's hundreds of users and those users are actually producing thousands of requests per second or it could be thousands of users and they have associated requests uh, in, in terms of thousands or hundreds of thousands that's when you would see the real problem where database uh, tends to choke down uh, there would be a time where database resources are maxed out uh, it's good for storage but it's not very good for transaction load handling capacity and that becomes the prime source of contention uh, within the environment and after that once you hit that mark uh, your application performance would go down it could actually be no service your requests can time out and then uh, you, you're not able to increase the number of requests load. so eventually your requests would be queued out uh, queued and then 
you know, overall user experience would be pretty bad as, as a response to that. And I'm not talking about any specific relational database. It's, it's a general uh, technology where relational databases have this problem. You can use NoSQL database, which is pretty scalable. We also have a product called NosDB, which is a NoSQL data source. But NoSQL database is generally not uh, a solution for this, primarily because it's a replacement of your existing, existing relational database. So you need to stop using relational data source, and you need to start using the NoSQL technology for that. And it demands your applications to be re-architectured and start using a NoSQL database instead of relational. So you need something which you can use in addition to our relational database. And solution is pretty simple. Uh, you start using a distributed cache. And that's what we have in agenda. Uh, we'll talk about ASP.NET Core applications, which are going through scalability problems, which have performance issues, and how to start using a distributed cache. So first of all, this is the deployment architecture of a typical distributed cache system. Uh, at the minimum, we recommend having two or more caching servers. Uh, these could be VMs or physical boxes. These could be on uh, on-prem or in cloud environment. These could be hosted, ISO.IO or AWS. And then you could create a team of cache servers and you can join them together into a cache cluster. A cache cluster allows you to pool their memory as well as their CPU capacity together. And on top of it, you also use their networking resources. So three resources are teamed together, pooled together. Uh, you have shared pool of memory, shared pool of CPU power, and shared pool of networking uh, network interface uh, resources and that gives you a very scalable platform and on top of it it's in memory so it's already faster in comparison to the database and then you can add more and more cache servers which help you to scale out based on the increased load from your applications if your application load is expected to increase uh, you don't have to worry about anything you don't need to change uh, your applications at all you can add more caching servers on the fly and that would just help you accommodate the increased load without any issues. Uh, you can use it within an ASP.NET Core web application. You can use it ASP.NET Core web API, or it could be any .NET or .NET Core server applications as well. Uh, these are uh, typical Windows boxes, uh, 2012, 2016, and you can also uh, use Java clients to, to go with it. But today's focus is ASP.NET Core, so we'll focus on that. Uh, then we have a relational database which can be used in conjunction with a distributed cache. It's not a replacement of our traditional relational data sources. Some data or all of data belongs in the distributed cache, but you have your master copy uh, in some cases for object caching in the database. For sessions, this becomes your main uh, source for data. Similarly, for response caching, this becomes your main source to have all your data stored, uh, all your uh, ASP.NET Core page responses uh, stored here. So this is uh, the starting point. We'll quickly get started with some use cases, and then I'll jump right into our uh, into our uh, demo environment and show you the actual sample applications and, and build how uh, and build details on, on how you could actually utilize a distributed cache in ASP.NET Core application. Now, uh, first use case is ASP.NET uh, you know data caching. Uh, NCache has uh, data caching API, and idea here is Motivation to use data caching is that you use uh, a faster source in between your application and the database, and you save trips to the database as much as possible. Primarily because database is slow, it's disk in comparison to in-memory, and then it's not scalable. And in some cases, it's also a single point of failure. If it's under peak load and it chokes down, it can hurt your uh, business by not serving the request. There could be timeouts on the application request. So, you should plan on using, uh, you know, caching for data-related, uh, you know, use cases. Within ASP.NET Core, you have two options. You can use their conventional, the ASP.NET Core iDistributed Cache interface. Uh, Microsoft has uh, come up with iDistributed Cache within ASP.NET Core in version 1.1, 1 .1, and then in 2.0, they've also, uh, you know, enhanced this. The iDistributed Cache has not been enhanced, but overall, ASP.NET Core 2.0 uh, framework that that is enhanced version of uh, ASP.NET Core. So you can either use a I distributed cache interface, and I'll show you uh, how to plug in a distributed cache for that. Typically, it's an in-memory, or or you could use uh, a custom provider for that. And then you can also use NCache APIs directly as well. And I will talk about merits, uh, what approach you should go with, and why. Uh, NCache API is pretty elaborate in comparison; it gives you a lot more uh, control. A lot more uh, features are available. So both options are, are going to be highlighted as part of this webinar. 
Then we have ASP.NET Core specific caching where we have session storage. Uh, that's also uh, uh, through iDistribute cache. There are uh, middleware. Uh, we have session services uh, implemented. And then we have response caching, again, as, as a middleware, uh, where you start using uh, NCache for these two options. And then uh, an extended use case could be a PubSub messaging, where you can use a distributed cache for messaging platform, and you can route messages between components of same application, or it could be two different applications altogether. So you could have a publisher, which publishes messages to a certain topic, and then there are subscribers who are interested in, in receiving those topics. And similarly, you can also have runtime data sharing uh, through data events, data driven events. So that's another uh, use case uh, where you can use a distributed caching system like NCache in an ASP.NET Core application. So let's quickly get started. Uh, I'll show you the actual environment in action. I'll quickly create a distributed cache. So for that, I have my two boxes right here, demo one and demo two, and my personal machine would be used as a client. And I'll show you how to plug in uh, NCache as I distribute cache as, as a starting point. All right, uh, I'm using the management tool, but you can use the command line or, or PowerShell tools as well. Uh, GUI uh, based tools are more flexible, so I'll just stick to these for now. NCache is open source, by the way, uh, so whatever uh, features that I would highlight today. Uh, you could actually extract the source code and see how we've done those implementations as well. So I wanted to clarify that as well. Uh, caching topologies, we have many caching topologies. If I have to quickly show you the partition replica cache. Uh, since NCache is a distributed cache, uh, you can have multiple servers. And with the help of this topology, you can partition data on different servers. You could have you know, equal utilization of server resources from these servers, and you can add as many servers as you want. And then there's a partition replica where a partition has a backup on another box. So each server hosts an active and a passive replica. This becomes active if the active if the active goes down. So if server one goes down, backup of server one it is automatically activated, and you get all the data from server two. And this is the same topology with three servers. We have active partitions, partition one, two, and three, and then we have partition one's backup on two. Partition 2's backup on server 2, uh, server 3, and server partition 3, which is server 3's backup on, or, or on server 1. So each server has a backup. If a server goes down, cluster uh, makes the backup activated automatically. It's completely seamless to your users. And uh, cluster heals itself, and it again formulates a healthy two node active and backup partition, completely seamless to your users. And on top of it, it's very scalable for reads, very scalable for writes. Individual read and write performance is super fast in this particular topology. So, this is what I'll be using uh, in this particular demo. I'll keep everything simple. It comes with async and sync option. I'll choose async, it's faster. Uh, here, I specify my caching servers, which are going to host my distributed cache, demo one and demo two. I'll just stick with these two servers. NCache is a TCP IP based cache clustering protocol. So server to server communication and client to server communication is done through TCP IP uh, socket. So I'll pick a TCP IP port. Uh, and by the way, all these configurations are part of our existing webinars and these are explained in, in detail in our documentation as well. Since today's agenda is to focus more on ASP.NET Core side, so I'm going uh, quickly through these uh, steps. But, but rest assured that these uh, you know, configurations are captured in, in our architecture and, and NCache configuration webinars already. Size uh, is again on per server, so I'll just keep the default. And then I can keep the evictions uh, you know, at, at a default level. If cache becomes full, some of the items can automatically be removed if evictions are turned on. And I'll choose finish, and, and that's it. That has created my cache. So server side configurations are complete at this point. I'll just add my box as a client because I need to access the this cache from my machine, so I need the client-side configurations. And then I'll start this cache cluster and test it, and after that, uh, we'll move on to our uh, ASP.NET uh, core applications. I have three different sample applications that I'll be using, and I'll showcase I distribute cache for data caching, uh, I distribute cache again for session state caching, and then I distribute cache and response caching. And then we'll also highlight our NCache API natively used within an application without the iDistributed cache. And guys, please let me know if there are any questions. Please let me know, uh, you know if, if you need me, uh, want me to elaborate on, on a certain topic. I'll just right-click into statistics. That helps. 
And from my machine right here, I'll run a stress testing tool application come, which comes installed with NCache and see if I'm able to connect to this cache. And let me just open NCache monitor tool as well. There you go. So I, you can already see the activity going on, right? So both servers are, are being utilized evenly. So that explains that my cache is configured fine and everything looks good. And you can see the monitoring tool already populating some graphs right here. So everything looks good. All right, so first thing that I'll do after we have configured the distributed cache, that's an expectation that when you start using ASP.NET Core applications and you plan on using a distributed cache, you need to create a distributed cache and that's something that we've done. You need to download the product, install it on a couple of servers uh, or more, and then based on that, you actually configure a distributed cache. So first segment within our uh, distributed cache uh, offering is that you can use ASP.NET Core sessions within an application and you plug in NCache as a provider for that. Uh, by default, you have a standalone uh, you know, option where everything goes into uh, in, the, in the process memory. So that's option number one. And it is, uh, it is, it it would not be scalable. You have one source, and all your sessions are there. You need to use sticky session uh, bit uh, for uh, in memory storage because if a request from one web server goes to another, this would actually be uh, data loss uh, for for that particular request. Similarly, your web server can go down, and you would lose all sessions. So it's a single point of failure. It's not very scalable, and it needs sticky sessions. Then you have SQL Server mode, which is slow. Again, not very scalable, and then in some cases, it's also not very reliable because it can choke down on the peak load. And then third option is I distributed cache, where you could, that's the most suitable option, where you can uh, plug in distributed caches like NCache or Redis. And I'll also draw a comparison between NCache and Redis if, if time permits. Otherwise, that uh, comparison is already published on our website. NCache is native .NET uh, built uh, product. It has a lot more features. Uh, it has a lot more tools in comparison, and uh, it's fully supported as well. But I'll, I'll show some more, uh, you know, detailed comparison towards the end if time permits. So let's get started with this. Uh, I um, uh, our main focus is to use I distributed cache, and we'll 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 actually build details on top of that. So Ron, I have a question here. Um, Somebody's asking, does NCache use native ASP.NET Core sessions object, or is there a custom object for sessions in IA distributed cache? Okay, very good. So, uh, as you are aware, uh, you know ASP.NET Core sessions, uh, they also have their own session object, right? So, with NCache, you can just uh, use NCache as a store and use ASP.NET Core native session object in NCache. That's option number one. But that would just limit the uh, the existing session object just stored in NCache for performance and scalability reasons. With NCache, we have an optimized custom session object as well. So if you start using NCache session object, it would just serialize and deserialize automatically. It comes with locking. Uh, so our custom session object, which we uh, typically use in ASP.NET framework as well. So for ASP.NET Core, uh, you can even use NCache custom, custom session object as well. From user perspective, behavior is exactly the same. Uh, so no code changes or, or uh, any behavioral changes are expected, but on top of it, you get more optimizations if you uh, switch to NCache custom session object. So to answer this question, both options are available with NCache. I hope that helps. All right, so uh, I have this uh, sample application, which uh, I have a, you know, uh, downloaded from uh, Microsoft, and then I actually started building this application so that I am able to use it for session state as well as for object caching. So I'll open the documentation as well, uh, because uh, if you plan on using, so uh, let me just explain the document that I've used as a reference so that you guys can also use it. So in our programmer's guide, uh, if you go to ASP.NET core segment, we have session storage in ASP.NET, right? So uh, configure ASP.NET core session provider. So first thing is that you add, inst uh, add a NuGet package into your existing product uh, and, and, and take it from there. So first of all, if you go to the dependencies, I already have 
Halachi Session Services NuGet package installed in this sample application. If I come right here, search for NuGet packages. So you have Alachi Session Services version 4.9 already installed. And if it is not installed, all you need to do is look for NCache. There's an SDK which I've already installed for, for data caching, uh, but the the session services uh, NuGet packet, that's what you need in order to be using NCache for session management within an ASP.NET Core. So just uh, choose this uh, package, install it, and what it would essentially do is it would add all the uh, you know relevant assemblies as part of that. Or for session, uh, you would see alachisoft.ncache.sdk. Uh, there are some alachisoft.core sessions for provider, session state management, and sessions for provider. So it has added the needed assemblies which which you uh, would need in order to use ncache for session management. Now, next step within the documentation is to add these namespaces. I've already done that. Primarily, you have this. Uh, Microsoft.ASP.NET Core hosting. That may already be part of your project, but if it's not, just add it. And then session state, And that's it. Uh, after that, you just plug in your middleware, uh, which is NCache in this case, and start using the session management. All right, so next segment is that you read configurations. Uh, there are two options for that. One is that you use the method and then pass on the configurations in the code, or you could uh, do this with the help of uh, a, a file which is added already. All right, so let me just and set and guess service configuration, right? So this is the main uh, method that I want to highlight. Let me just show this with the help of the sample application. So within the configure, First thing that you need is set ncache service configuration, and then there's an ncache section uh, within the configure dot uh, within, within one of the uh, JSON files which I've added as part of this project. Let me just open it for you. Config.json. So this particular section, uh, ncache session, has all the details that you need for ncache session management, right? So we have a session app ID which gets appended to the session ID in the distributed cache. And then we have a cookie name which you can change based on uh, your requirements. Some settings around cookies. Then the cache name, the most important one. We've already configured demo cache, so you need a cache name where your sessions would go. Uh, enable logs, so that logging uh, on the client end is enabled. Detailed uh, error logs, exception enabled to, to be thrown on the client end. And then uh, there is a session app ID which gets actually appended. So that's uh, Webinar test is, is going to be appended to the session ID, so you can distinguish between sessions of different applications with the help of this um, session app ID. If you just leave it empty, it, it would it just run fine, but it's just a way of distinguishing sessions between different applications. And within the startup.cs, it actually reads this, and you have all the configuration from, from that point on. Then you, uh, services.ncache, add ncache session. That's the next line that you need to add so that NCache uh, is initialized as part of that. And then that's another way of uh, add NCache session where you could actually use the configurations directly in this method. But either way, it would just work fine. And after that, the last thing that you need to do is either use NCache custom session object or use the ASP.NET Core native session object. It's entirely up to you, uh, but I would personally recommend that you in your particular application, you would have a line of code which says something like this, app.useSession, which actually is an ASP.NET Core session object. But if you just comment this out and plan on using use ncache session, this would actually use ncache session object within the uh, session state. So that's going to be uh, a better approach because our session object is, let me just show you this, use session. So this is Microsoft ASP.NET Core Builder. Other, uh, the Alternatively, the other one is uh, the NCache session state 
object. So I would stick to NCache because it's more optimized. Serialization, deserialization is part of the protocol, uh, part, part, part of the provider, and then it has locking and some other, uh, you know, advanced features that come, uh, you know, as part of that. And that's it. I just need to, uh, that completes my, uh, you know, my middleware is plugged in, right? I use NCache session, and then these are the three changes that I need to uh, do in order to use NCache for session management within an ASP.NET Core application. Primarily, you, you set up a config.json, or you uh, pass those configurations in the code, and then you call, uh, you know, add session method, and then you uh, call uh, use NCache session method, and, and that's pretty much it. Uh, so I'll run this application for you uh, real quick and show you a session object being created in the in the demo cache, and then it would also have a webinar test uh, app ID appended to it. So our session uh, would be uh, going to distribute cache and cache automatically, and then you can see there are no, uh, not many code changes that you need to perform in order to achieve this. Any questions so far as part of session management in and cache? It'll take some time because uh, I ran it in debug, so please bear with me. All right, so by now a session object must have been created and you could see a session object right here. Uh, back up on the other server right here. So we have fully distributed sessions. And just to ensure that it's, it is actually the session object from the uh, the application, this is our session ID, which ASP.NET Core uh, platform generated for my session. And then webinar test is the app ID, which actually distinguishes it uh, that this is a session from this particular application. You could come up with any app ID. Uh, and application session would always have this uh, app ID appended to all the sessions which are created here. So that completes our uh, first use case. Uh, second use case is around data caching. Now this is uh, slightly elaborate uh, where Microsoft has given ASP.NET Core I distributed cache interface, right? So it's a, it's a, a, a general uh, distributed caching uh, you know, interface where you can plug in any provider at the back end. For example, you can start using NCache. You can have your custom implementation, uh, but your application uh, does not need to change the code. So you can test different products, uh, get the feel of uh, all the products by changing them on the server end, but behind the scenes, you just need to plug in uh, the provider that, that you're interested in. So these are the methods. It comes with get and get async, refresh, refresh async, remove and remove async, and then set and set async. So basic create, read, update, delete with async variations. Uh, one important thing is that it, it, it uses byte arrays. Although uh, .NET Core uh, has come up with serialization uh, in 2.0, but they have not uh, updated this I distributed cache. So the expectation for I distributed cache is that user application would serialize and deserialize all the objects. So let's actually evaluate this, how to use I distributed cache and how to plug in and cache for I distributed cache interface. So again, coming back to the same application, we have the same application where in the startup.cs you would have seen another line of code which is again using the configurations uh, set and cache session configuration uh, you know method. And then it's using ncache distributed cache. If I go into details of this, uh, so this is ncache session extension, and and within that we have our distributed cache, i distributed cache interface also implemented. So same NuGet package would cover i distributed cache as well as ncache session management. Uh, and after that, you could actually use uh, the i distributed cache, and it would automatically plug in ncache as a provider. A typical example of that would be our store controller, which I have created right here. Let me just comment this segment out. So Ron, um, I have a quick question here. Yeah. Um, 
Microsoft has given serialization support in .NET Core 2.0. Does NCache use .NET serialization here, or is there a condition being used here? All right. Uh, yeah, um, I, I touched this question. Uh, so we discussed some details. So yes, Microsoft indeed has uh, provided ASP.NET. Uh, you know, .NET Core uh, 2.0 comes with serialization support, and binary serialization is part of that. But uh, since I distribute cache is also Microsoft's framework, and if I quickly show you the interface right here, uh, you could see that it's using byte arrays, right? That actually means that uh, this interface expects, expects that the data is already serialized by the application. So if you just plug in and cache for I distributed cache, it's user application's responsibility to serialize and deserialize. And I have an example that I'll show uh, in a bit around this, that where I'm using I distribute cache interface with NCache, since I distribute cache does not support serialization, it expects byte arrays to be uh, sent back and forth to the to the cache that that's plugged in. So serialization and deserialization is done by the application. But there's a work around it uh, to it. Actually, th there's a better way to do this. Uh, you can stop using I distribute cache, or or you can additionally use NCache APIs. In that case, your application does not have to use serialization at all. So although it's a limitation within I distribute cache, and cache takes care of this uh, with the help of a native API that it presents, where n cache serialization serializes and deserializes data, and users doesn't have to do that. So it's going to be part of the protocol, part of the API as part of n cache API support. I hope that helps. Okay, thanks. Yeah. All right. So uh, let me actually take some details uh, uh, from. Uh, let's use this uh, question as an ins inspiration and. and expand on this. So you can see byte array. So it, it, it expects that it would be dealing with byte arrays. And in, in add, it's again putting byte array, right? So let me just go back here. What we have done here is uh, we have a controller, a uh, store controller. And, and one of the methods, uh, it's getting I distribute cache. And this is a, the Microsoft uh, ASP.NET Core I distribute cache. But once we would run it, let me just put a breakpoint here. it would actually call cry and get value method. This is a custom method uh, within uh, this application that we have implemented. And it f gets the byte array, and it actually ser uh, deserializes it. Similarly, we have a set object method, which first of all serializes it, and then puts it in the cache. So serialization and deserialization is something that your application needs to do. And it's the responsibility of user if you specifically go with the iDistribute cache interface. Now let's run this application. All it's doing is using I distribute cache, cache object, uh, getting an object, checking if it exists. If it's not, it would actually f build that object and, and store it in the distributed cache. So let me run the same sample application and go to this code path and see how it goes. And again, for this uh, data caching, you again need the same NuGet packet that we've already added. So our sessions are uh, I distribute cache implementation, and, and next uh, feature is response caching. That's going to be consumed with the help of our uh, NCache session state service NuGet packet that initially added in this application. It takes some time on my end. Uh, um, I need to check on why you know, on, on, on this particular workstation it takes awfully long time, but eventually it would load and we should be able to see data being cached and uh, data being cached through I distribute cache interface. And I'll show you the, uh, the namespace in response to that. It's loaded, right? So session must already been added. If I click on an album, it would actually take me to the breakpoint. And if I quickly go through it, and first of all, let me show you the cache object. Although it's I distribute cache, but it's being exposed by a state dot ncache distribute cache. That's the implementation that we've done for this interface. Uh, there are some downsides like uh, serialization, deserialization is a responsibility of user. On top of it, you are limited to these features only because that's what ASP.NET Core is offering at this point. But anyways, uh, let's go through this method. Uh, 
and you would see first of all it's getting an object if it's not null which it is null at this point nothing is added it would just return false and next thing it would do is it would actually try get value which is null and it would build that object and then as part of that it would set that object and again within the set object we have our own method set object it's creating a memory stream it's serializing the uh, object and this uh, you know uh, stream is the actual object which is now serialized by array. it is going to add that into the cache if I just hit play here this has added an object in the cache by serializing it first and if I quickly show you the object there are two items in the cache right now one is a session object and the other is the album object that we just created let me just browse through some other pages uh, this time I'll just uh, browse and hit play there you go and let me just add another album here again hit play uh, there you go and then let me just add one more hit play so we've added four albums in the distributed cache and you have these four albums added as part of that now if I hit get the first album back one more time it would actually read it from the distributed cache and this time if I show you the object it would have the object back right and now it's deserializing that because it's, it needs to deserialize within the application itself right so it, it returned true and then we have the object being fetched from the distributed cache as part of that and you could see that uh, this works without any issues now let's talk about some of the issues with this uh, uh, since it's I distributed cache it's still in its uh, native form it's not pretty elaborate these are the features that you have to work with uh, you know these are limited serialization is not part of it what about database synchronization what about database dependencies preloading the cache uh, all the good stuff right so uh, if your requirements are pretty bare bone where you just need caching for faster access and you don't want to make any code changes and rely on our distributed cache standard uh, this is the way to go with it. On the server end, you have all the elaborate features that, that you would like to use. So NCache would take care of server-side features, but on the client end, this is the scope that you have to work with. Now, alternatively, there's another approach that you could use the native API, and that's pretty elaborate. You use NCache API directly in your application. So let's discuss that, and then uh, I would showcase one other feature. You can use NCache API directly, and for that, what you really need to do is and by the way, you can use iDistribute cache interface with NCache and use NCache API uh, directly within the same application. It doesn't limit you that you only use one. You can use these side by side as well. All right, so next thing that I'll do is I'll add a new git package here. I think I've already added it. Alachisoft.ncache.sdk, the latest SDK. If you go to the uh, new git packages, Alachisoft.ncache.sdk is already added. If I just uh, browse, this is the SDK that I've already installed it. So if I sh expand on it, the SDK has all the libraries that you need. Alachisaw.ncache.web.runtime. And it's pretty straightforward. It doesn't even require you to uh, set up any middleware, right? So within the same controller, you need web.caching. This is the client API, and that's pretty much it. And then let me just comment this segment out because it's using iDistributed cache. And on comment the uh, the same control uh, you know control action method uh, which is using ncache. Here it's using check and initialize cache. Let's go to the definition. It's using cache and cache dot initialize cache. So it's not using i distribute cache. It's using ncache. Uh, let me show you the cache object right here. There you go. So it's alachi sort of ncache dot web dot caching. And by the way, this is all open source now. I'm using the library, but the source code is available on the Git GitHub repository, and you can actually download and see how we've implemented this. All right, so it's what it's, it's really doing is, is initializing the cache, and then it's calling cache.get. And notice that there's no serialization or deserialization needed when you use the native API. So that should answer your other question as well. Uh, since ASP.NET Core I distribute cache interface does not have serialization deserialization as part of it, although .NET Core 2.0 has it, uh, but with NCache, it doesn't really matter. 
NCache uses its own native serialization. Uh, so it would just use binary serialization on all the objects that uh, that you would like to cache. So it actually makes it a lot more easier. On top of it, it has a lot more APIs. Let me just run this same application. Let me just clear the contents of the cache. So same uh, approach for the application. So it will take some time. I'll use uh, this time to build on other uh, features that you could actually use. You, ha you can use uh, our native API directly for uh, data caching, and you can keep cache fresh in, in response to database, or, or you could use it uh, with the help of expirations. You can, you can put data based on the time you think that data is going to be valid. So you can use time-based expirations. You can synchronize cache with database using database dependencies. Any change in the database would invalidate all the items from the cache. Similarly, you can synchronize cache with non-relational data sources with the help of our file or custom dependency. And then you can have one-to-one, one-to-many, or many-to-many -many relationships captured as well as part of this. Since my application has come back, let me just hit next. Now, if I go through this, is there a question? Yeah, Aram. Uh, so, a quick question. What is the framework requirement for a .NET Core application? Uh, do we need to have .NET Core installed on our system, or can the application run on .NET Framework as well? Okay. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a very good question. NCache uh, actually does not have any limitation. If you have an ASP.NET Core application, you could actually run it on .NET Core, or you could actually run it on .NET Framework as well. This is something that Microsoft supports. And based on that, you know, that would be supported for NCache as well. Uh, nice thing about NCache is that it has a .NET client as well as .NET Core client. So you have full set of libraries. So if you include a NuGet package based on your project type, it would actually uh, bring in the resources from the right, uh, you know, assembly cache, right? So if you have .NET Core targeted, it would use the .NET Core libraries. If you have .NET Framework targeted and you plan on stor storing, uh, running an ASP.NET application, .NET Core application on .NET Framework, NCache will uh, run just fine. So from NCache standpoint, there are no limitations. You can run a .NET Core application on .NET Core as well as regular .NET Framework without any issues. I hope that helps. Uh, I'll quickly go through this method. Initialize the cache. Right, so this is going to bring the cache object, and I've already shown you the cache object. Now, all it's doing is creating an album. First checking, album comes out to be null, builds the album, no serialization, deserialization needed, and then it's simply calling cache.insert. And by that time, if I hit play, an album would be added in the cache, and, and since it was the first time, uh, you have one item here, and you would have one item here. That's a session object, which this application is creating, and one album object is already in the cache. I'll quickly go through a few albums, as we did for uh, I distribute cache as well, and hit play. Right, and let's create one more album, and I think that should serve the purpose. Three albums. And let me come back here and show you the three albums added in the cache. Now, if I just uh, hit the first album back, it would again pick up, and now it has that album cached already. So you could see that uh, it already has initialized, so it wouldn't take much time. And you have the album back, right? So if I hit play, it would just bring the album from the distributed cache. So that's how easy it is, and as we were expanding on this, uh, we have read through and write through providers to synchronize changes between cache and the data source. Auto reload if a cache uh, database changes, you can automatically reload the data in the in in the cache with the help of dependency and and, and read through features. You can use groups, subgroups, or logical collections, as good like searches. Uh, the list goes on, right? So with our native API, it's a lot more powerful, gives you a lot more control in comparison to iDistributed cache. But like I said, both options are available. If you have iDistributed cache, you can still plug in and cache and, and get rid of your performance and scalability bottlenecks. And if you uh, would like to use our API and want to expand on, on your usage of distributed cache, you can use our API natively. And you can use these two side by side as well. The last segment that we have is ASP.NET Core response caching, since it's pretty straightforward. So I'll quickly show you this as well. We have a sample application. Again, I have added the session services NuGet package. 
in this and then what I've really done here is that I have a view created just for this within this I'm let me actually show you the uh, f uh, initial details I have NK settings seg segment uh, within app settings you could just uh, come up with config.json or app settings.json and then within the startup.cs I'm plugging in my middleware which is ncache again I have to uh, read the uh, set ncache service configuration and then add ncache distributed cache that's all what I need and then I actually start using the response caching from ASP.NET response caching within ASP.NET Core is uh, a way where you can cache your responses and, and, and your views which are, which are static in nature, your pages which are not changing very frequently, you can cache them and you can save expensive trips to the backend data sources as well as execution within the application. So we'd cache the output and then that response can be used at a later, later stage if exact same request comes from the application. Within the controller, home controller, we have uh, uh, an action result method where we have a uh, response cache header set up and this is going to be cache and then within this we are using some distributed cache directives uh, for example we're using key base uh, attribute we're using ex expire after so it stays there for 10 seconds and then we're also using a very by so these are the the parameters based on which your output can change so I'll quickly run this is using ncache for response caching so if you have a use case where you use ASP.NET Core response caching you can even plug in ncache for that so this would just cover the complete offering where you use ncache for session state you use ncache for response caching and then you use ncache for I distribute cache and then eventually uh, or, or right away you can actually use ncache for direct API calls as well and and this would take care of all your performance and scalability bottlenecks that we initially discussed if I just hit about it would just uh, come up with some of the there you go normal item so cache item with, with the key changing key and then expire after tag and then vary by tag and then if I come back right here we have a few more items in the, in, in the in the cache if I just clear the contents so that we only have contents from this application and notice this uh, 25358 now it's 254.26. If, if I refresh after 10 seconds, it would just cache a new output based on the time value that you've set up. Uh, I think it's already 10 items, so uh, 10 seconds, so you would see two items, three items. One, uh, one item still exists, but after some time, it would just expire. There you go. One item has been expired, and this is based on uh, this parameter that we've set up. So cache item with expire after tag. Expire after is a response, uh, ASP.NET Core response caching uh, attribute that you can set up and based on that you can change the output, change the response after the stipulated time that you've set up. If I just refresh it one more time uh, on this, this uh, notice the timeline, 254.26. Now it's 255.15. So that's the new expiry and we would have a new item in the cache. Others would be vary by tag, vary by uh, vary by attribute. So if you the query string changes, it would actually change the output. So if you have a query string based on the customer ID or, or customer product price, the changing prices would actually create a new uh, response, uh, you know, results within the distributed cache. So that's how simple it is. Uh, towards the end, I'll show you some comparisons within. And cache is a TCP/IP based cluster. It's fully scalable no single point of failure peer to peer architecture protocol and in comparison to redis uh and cache is also open source is fully supported it's written in dotnet primarily for dotnet applications it comes with 24/7 supporting options uh you have vm model perpetual licensing is available uh it has server side code you get full control on the vm so you end up running server side cores as well uh on top of it, uh, you know, there are elaborate GUI and, and PowerShell tools. Monitoring support is built into it. So list goes on and there are some detailed comparison which are available on our website as well. So I hope you could actually go there and, and download those and, and, and see for yourself. Any questions, Nick?
Uh, no, we're waiting for questions. Actually, this is a good time. Uh, if somebody has any questions, uh, we're nearing the uh, end of it, end of the presentation. I think we're almost done here. So kindly let us know uh, a few questions um, and uh, we can get those answered for you. All right, otherwise uh, the technical portion is complete at this point. So I think it's a good time to have questions answered. Otherwise uh, we can conclude the presentation. Okay. Um, I have a question here saying uh, I've worked with NCache and it has an elaborate API library. Can I use all NCache APIs in I distributed cache or distributed cache, I guess? Okay, so like I mentioned, uh, you have I distributed cache, which is limited, right? So it has four methods and then async variation of those. So if you want to use NCache API, uh, you know, you, you use the NCache, the, the regular way of using NCache. So NCache API can be used in ASP.NET Core and the last example uh, covered exactly that, right? So you include the web.caching uh, web uh, library and then you initialize and, and start using the API. And as a matter of fact, uh, I've shown some of the APIs here. This is I distribute cache limited, but you can incrementally use NCache API or, or completely start using complete NCache API as, as you need to. And you get all the features within an ASP.NET Core offering, but you just need to stop using, you know, you could actually use these side by side. So you just need to use NCache API natively directly in, 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 in the application. So that's the way forward in order to use NCache features. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? <coughs> Otherwise, uh, I think it's time, so. Okay. Um, we're just going to take another minute or so for uh, anybody else who may have a question. Um, I would like to thank you, Ron. Um, you did a great job explaining all these features to us. Um, and um, we, you know, feel free to reach out to us uh, if you have further questions, if you would like to get some additional information from, uh, from us about NCASH. Um, you can send an email to support at alachisoft.com or sales at alachisoft.com and can help those um, get those answered for you. Um, I don't see any other questions, so I think um, uh, we can wrap this up. Uh, Ron, unless you have anything to add? No, I'm good. Uh, we can conclude. Yep. Okay. All right, great. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, it was a pleasure having you here. And I uh, look forward to uh, seeing you in other webinars. Thank you and take care. Thanks, Ron. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. Thank you.